Hi, my name is Russ, and this is our monthly meeting of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy. And this month, what Rancho Palos Verdes uh, City Hall, which used to be a World War I base and also a Nike missile base. And we're going to talk about the different plants and bugs and birds and the different guns that were here. We're in front of what's called a battery, battery barns. And Battery Barnes had two six-inch guns. It held six mil military people. It was self-contained with an air filtration unit. They could stay in here for long periods of time. And uh, we're going to walk around this and see where the guns were, in were installed. And then we'll walk around down the hill and uh, look at the Nike missile base. And on the way there, we'll look at uh, birds, bugs, insects, history and anything else that you would like to, to see. So let's walk around this and we'll take a look at the uh, where the two six inch guns were. So we're standing in front of a plant called uh, Isomerus arborea or bladder pod and it's a native plant in the caper family. It has a really neat thick stem uh, trunk and uh, bla uh, the bladder pod uh, Isomerus actually means equal parts and arborea means tree-like, and it's a really neat tree-like shrub with a really thick, thick uh, trunk, and it has a wind-swept look because of this constant wind that, that is blowing here, but it's, they're pretty large through here. It's a nice plant. It actually has flowers all year long, off and on. In the caper family, I've never eaten a caper, but uh, I heard I haven't missed much, but uh, there you go, bladder pod, Isomerus arborea. So now we're on top of that battery, Battery Harry C. Barnes, and uh, this is the second of the entrances and exits. Right out there, there's a round circle, and that round circle where those two gentlemen are standing is where the two six-inch guns were. Those six-inch guns held a bullet that was about six inches in diameter and it could be fired about 15 miles out. The, um, the gun had what was called a, a barbet carriage. A barbet carriage is either a wall that the, that, it, that the cannon shoots over or it's a protection over the cannon itself. Barbet is actually French for Barbara and Barbara is the uh, patron saint of, of our artil artillerymen. So even artillerymen have pa patron saints. The battery at White Point and at Fort MacArthur had 14 and 16 inch guns, which means the diameter of the barrel was like 16 inches wide. It would shoot a projectile, a bullet, that was over 2,000 pounds, about 25 or 30 miles. You could bomb Catalina. This one was about 15 miles and 6 inches in diameter, and this is where it was set up. All along the coast here are these small little things called battery, uh, called uh, base end stations or fire control stations. And these stations were small little bunkers into the hillside. Two people would get inside these little base end stations. One would be looking at azimuth. Azimuth is from side to side. The other one would be looking at DPF, which is the Depression Position Finder. They'd radio the coordinates to the control center. The, the, the control center will get three of these. They do the coordinates, triangulate, and then shoot off the bullet. Then there'd be a spotter, and they'd say, this is, uh, looks like 50 feet to the right and about 20 feet short, and then they'd blow off another round until they actually hit it. So this is actually called Upper Vincente Lighthouse. Hey Bill, how are you? <laughs> Haven't seen, seen you for, for a while. Uh, Upper Ven, Vincente Lighthouse and uh, I mean uh, Upper Vincente and down below us is Point Vincente, uh, interpretive center to the, to the right and uh, that recently opened. It was closed for a number of years because there's so much lead in the soil. And the lead was because it was a, it was a uh, rifle range for the mil military down, down there. So they found a bunch of lead in the soil and it was closed for at least four, four years, I'm assuming. Did, did they take all the lead out? 
Uh, they tried, yes. And then straight ahead of us is Point Vicente Lighthouse. Now, Point Vicente Lighthouse was named after, named for uh, a priest that was the priest in Ventura Mission by uh, George Vancouver in 1793. It's uh, open on Saturdays, the second Saturday of the month. We're a little bit late here today, but if you can get here second Saturday of the month, it's a fun place to go. The lighthouse itself is 67 feet from base to top. It's 197 feet above sea level. You can see it for about 20 miles out to a sea. It's still an active Coast Guard station. As you can see to the left, those, those housing, that housing is used for Coast Guard uh, officers, which is a kind of nice, nice uh, duty. The lighthouse itself was built in 26, 1926, and in 1939, the United States Coast Guard Service took over the lighthouse service. In 1973, 74, it was automated. It's been automated ever, ever since. It's on about a 14-second pulse, which means the light spins. It hits about every 14 seconds, and the fog horn will hit about every 14 seconds. So when a mariner is going across out there, like you can see that boat out there, when they're going across and there's too much fog and they, they see this light or they, or they hear the sound, they can check with their watch of 14 seconds between these intervals. They check their chart, which one is 14 seconds. It's Point Vincente. And then the chart will also say how deep it is, if there's rocks and things like, like that. This bunker that you're talking about here, the information center, what does that provide? Uh, that's a whale watching place and it has a little uh, mu museum and they have uh, information on whale watching and they also have some fossils and some Native American artifacts. It's a pretty neat, neat place. Like and that's fun. also free. So all this stuff is open. If we would have done this earlier in the morning, we could have gone over there afterwards. So maybe uh, you can... What time do they close? That I don't know. Are they open on Sunday? Yeah, the interpretive center, I'm assuming they are. Okay. Right below us is a native cactus. We have three different kinds of cactus around here. We have, uh, they're all called, Opuntia is the genus, and there's Auricula, Littoralis, and Prolifera. Now, as you look down, this one right in, in front of us, you see a really round pad. See how round those pads are? That means it's Opuntia auricula. It has a round pad and kind of a yellowish spine. The one kind of next to it and closer is much more of a beaver tail shape. It's not a beaver tail cactus, but it has more of a beaver tail shape and it has more of a white spine. It's called Auricula littoralis. And if you look to our left here, right, I mean, uh, right over there behind us, that's called jumping choya, and that's called prolifera, uh, opuntia prolifera. So three different kinds of native, native cactus. That's choya, and the other two are called prickly pear. And they make great habitat for cactus wrens and, and things like that. Any of them are edible? Uh, yeah, and I've eaten the, uh, the, uh, the pad, and I've also eaten the uh, fruit. But, you know, the pad is called Nopalis, and you can buy it in, in the stores, and um, it tastes kind of like slimy string beans. <laughs> sort, of, sort of bland. It's kind of bland, unless it's in with chorizo and some great stuff, then it tastes great. Uh, what we're standing in front of are called acacia trees, acacia cy cyclopsis, Australian tree. They reach its full height in about eight years, and they die in about 35 years. We really dislike these trees because they, they make so much mess. There's just litter all over the place. And all this litter becomes really bad fire ha ha hazard. So we would like all these to be gone if possible, but, but they're here. What happens is a small seed, there's a small seed in, the, in these pods, and it's hard to see, but the seed itself has, a, has an orange fruit going around it and then there's a seed in the center and what happens is that the bird eats the fruit the seed passes through the bird and then where it falls you wind up getting another acacia tree so they're all over the place so it's, 
Yeah, so it kind of looks like an eye. That's why they call it Acacia cy Cyclopsis. So. Okay, this is uh, the bladder pod that we saw before, and I said it was usually in bloom all year round, and this one happens to be in uh, bloom. They need no, no water once they're established, and uh, they have a nice flower. Another plant that doesn't need water you can grow in your garden. And this is the third entry and exit of Battery Harry C. Barnes. And uh, it's the one that has six men, self-contained. And uh, this is the th third way out. Just wanted to show you all three ways. And these are all uh, tumbleweeds. Uh, this is a large open space that we've recently acquired and uh, we're going to be planting that too with native plants and uh, it's going to look great in a, a few years. This cactus that you see below me is really good cactus wren habitat, uh, gnat catchers. I mean it's a, it's a really nice habitat so we try to keep it the way it is. We don't bring a lot of people uh, walking through it or anything because it would, it would damage it. But in a few years it'll all be planted and it'll look, look great. Uh, this is called a, a spurge and it has little tiny flowers. It's in the Euphorbia family. It has a, a light little milk, but it has a neat little flower. You might want to pass that, that around and look at it, and I'll hold this for, for the camera. Look how small these flowers are. You could probably fit one on the he head of a pin, but they're really small, white milky sap. As you can see, when you touch it, it's on your, your fingers. It's a non-native plant, but it's uh, kind of kind of kind of neat what you got a scent no there's no scent to it but it's called spurge it's in the euphorbia family euphorbia family is a real large uh, group of plants uh, in charles hoag's book insects of the la basin he talks about how trapdoor spiders becoming less and less common because they they are on rolling hills western exposure with a lot of sun and in short tufts of grass. And we like the same thing. We like these rolling hills with views, with sun exposure. So the trapdoor spider is getting less and less. It's called Both Real Certum Californicum. And this is a trapdoor spider right, right here. And you can see its, its door right there. It's like a large D, it's like a very large, yeah. la large D. They usually go fairly vertical, maybe on an angle. They, they go about eight inches down, sometimes 12, sometimes six, depending on the, how, how thick, uh, how much rocks in the, in, the, in the soil. There's a spider in there now. The female almost always stays right at the nest. And what the male does, they stay at the nest too, except during the spring when it walks around and finds a female to mate with. The, what the spider does, it lifts up the lid just a little bit and waits for an insect to walk by, a grasshopper or something, and then it grabs it, takes it down into the... Into the trap door. Yeah, and they, they do not leave there. The, the female almost never leaves there. Then the female mates with the male in the spring, and it, it, it lays its eggs, and it stays with its young over winter. And then by the next spring, when it's ready to mate again, the young go out, try to find their own area. Again, most of them get, get eaten. You know, 99% of all these little in insects get eaten. The uh, trapdoor spider is probably a little bigger, the body is a little bigger than my finger. It has very thick, short legs, and it digs this hole with these two anterior fang-like projections, and it has these little digging spines on its front legs. So it's three quarters of an inch round, about eight inches deep, filled with silk, silk top, fits perfectly, and they call it a cork nest, because it fits just like a cork in a bottle. It's kind of like when you carve a pumpkin, how you bevel the pumpkin lid. That's how this is. And I used to open them, but I don't anymore because I always uh, damage them. Once they're damaged, it's easier for another animal to open it up. And I don't want to mess with them. All right. is, that poisonous? is that poisonous?